I'm Josh Lipton and I commute my bike. I'm here at the North American Handmade Bike Show in Austin, Texas. I'm here with Jeremy Sisip of Sisip Bicycles. How you doing, Jeremy? Pretty good. Good, good. How are you enjoying the show? Really good. Today's been really busy, so it's good. Yeah. How did you become a cyclist? Um, I just started riding. Uh, I was in college and someone took me mountain biking and I thought it was really fun. Um, and kind of became more of a hobby and eventually a bunch of my friends started racing and I wanted to get in the building side of it more so I started apprenticing cool. and but I, you know since then I've been pretty much riding yeah excellent yeah. Uh, do you commute by bike I do okay. so I live in town where my shop is so about four or five miles away so it's a pretty easy commute but yeah yeah. Where, where, do, where do you live and what's the, or describe San, your community? So we're in Santa Rosa, California. It's about an hour north of San Francisco. Sonoma okay. County, kind of wine country, yeah. but there's still kind of a little downtown community. Yeah. So that's our shop is downtown and uh, yeah, just ride through town to work. Yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, good routes for commuting? Good routes for commuting. There's the coalition is there, Sonoma County Bike Coalition. We're yeah. trying to get more involved with uh, opening more bike lanes and things like that. Right. So it's getting better. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. But would you choose three concepts to describe an ideal commuter bike? Um, I would say an ideal commuter bike would be something comfortable to ride, uh, easy, you know, um, you know, maybe maybe some racks incorporated into it so they can haul stuff around. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, my, my main thing is I do custom frames, so everything's about the way you fit on the bike, you know, and obviously the way it rides. Yeah. So that's, I would say that's, you know, ways of carrying your stuff to work and back is one big thing. Fit, and um, yeah, I guess that's a couple of things, but. What inspired you to get started with bike building and what inspires you to continue on with it? Um, what inspired me, I, I was doing the, I was actually taking, I was in art school, doing right. product design classes. Okay. And uh, when I was into cycling, it kind of got more into it. I decided that's what I wanted to do, was design and build bikes. Right. So uh, I apprenticed for a couple of bike uh, frame builders um, and started on my own business soon after that. Yeah. And, who who uh, were those builders? Um, I did a class at UBI, and at the time it was with Albert Eisentrout. Okay. So I took a class with him, and then I also worked and apprenticed for Rock Lobster okay. Cycles. He's in Santa Cruz. Right. Um, and kind of went off and uh, on my own after that with my brother. Well, I actually started a business with my brother when he graduated from art school. Okay. Um, and been doing this since. Yeah. Since 1992. Oh, wow. Great. And yeah. I do it because people, you know, when I see people on the bikes and I see them on the trails and they like their bikes, it makes you feel good. It makes yeah. you want to do it more. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. What are the majority of your bikes used for? Um, I would say most of our bikes are, I would say recreation, because we do a lot of mountain bikes and road bikes, strictly. Right. But we do a, lot, a line called Java Boy and the Java Girl, which is similar to this. Right. Um, and which is, I think a lot of people are buying those bikes nowadays for commuting, right. um, or their town bikes. So it's, it's getting bigger, like that, that segment of my bikes are getting more popular. Right. I'm right. doing more and more of me here. Yeah. So. Um, if money was no object, what bicycle accessories would you integrate into the bicycle frame and what would you just build mounting points for? Um, I would say an integrated lock is very important to me because yeah. I have one. I, I actually build a bike around that and I, and I use it all the time. My okay. commuter bike has it. Right. And, um, you know, I, I do have a front and rear rack on my commuter bike and oh. fenders oh, right. and, I, and I use both quite a bit. Cool. Um, what are your favorite bicycle accessories to put on your bike? Uh, accessories, I would say my fenders and, and some sort of bag or some sort of rack, or, you know, right. some sort of basket yeah. to just to haul stuff around. Okay. <clears throat> um, I want to talk a little about electric bikes. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about the constraints and or opportunity for adding electric assist systems to your bikes? Uh, I don't have that much experience with electric bikes. I've done one, an electric assist bike. Okay. Um, and it was uh, it was basically built around a cargo style bike right. to kind of help you move you along okay. when you're hauling heavy stuff. Right. But um, obviously it's heavy. Right. And that's kind of the main, you know, why I don't like to use it or right. haven't built one since. Okay. Um, 
but that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. And and the pain that it was to build it and make it work and function correctly. Wait, when was how long ago was that? That was at the San Jose uh, Handmade Bike Show, which oh, right, is I 2005, 2006 so, maybe. Two, I think it was yeah 2006. Somewhere was it there. The, the Stoke Monkey. System? Yes. Right. Yeah. So that's the system I used. Right. And yeah. I incorporated it around a frame. Yeah. And so I, I made my own mounting points and and uh, and a case that mount that held the battery pack. Right. Yeah. So it was quite a bit of work to get it all right. created in there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. And it's super heavy, so it's not the greatest. Right. Like to like haul around or easy to ride. Right, right. But the electric. But but once it's on it. and you're holding a ton of stuff, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you have any thoughts on commuting bike design trends that have been picked up by the big players in the cycling industry? Um I think it's my thoughts on it, I guess it's great that they're doing it. Yeah. But it has, it's funny that it's happened though. I mean, it's, right. you know, pretty much every big company is making something like, you know, the Java Boy bike that we started, you know. We made one, the first one we made was a 94, a, a light commuter style bike with right. vendors. And uh, yeah, so it's great, I think. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Gets more people out there on them. Yeah. <clears throat> so imagine that I'm a potential buyer, but not a bike building connoisseur. Mm -hmm. What features of your commuter bikes would you want to emphasize to me, perhaps on this bike? Uh, something like this. We incorporated a generator front hub is one thing. And so, there, unfortunately, I didn't have a light to put on it, but it's got a generator <laughs> hub, which powers a light. Uh, and it's enough to power a taillight and a headlight. Uh, so no need for batteries. And it's got disc brakes on it, so in the wet weather, brakes work great. You're not wearing away your rims. Um, this has fenders on it, so for commuting in the wet you know, weather, it's great. You don't get all soaked. Uh, and this happens to have the, we're actually trying out the new Alphine 11 speed hub on this bike. So it says 11, 11 gears, internal hub, so no need for derailers or anything messy. Um, and so this particular bike we made removable or folding racks, removable uh, grocery bags for for shopping at the grocery store after work. Uh, but most of our bikes that we do, we pretty much, uh, since they're all kind of custom, we, uh, we incorporate all kinds of different styles of racks, whatever they want to hold or, or use it for. This happens to be a grocery getter type of bike. But. All right. Well, well, Jeremy, thanks for telling us about your yeah. great bikes. Really thanks. Appreciate it. Great work. I'm Josh Lipton, and I commute by bike.